everyone and welcome back to Wildlife Park 2 and we are here getting ready for another mission and I know a lot of you guys oh look at the flamingos I just love when the flamingos are flying around I love this loading screen because it's so dynamic and there's a little baby zebra walking around oh my goodness oh and there's a rhino just popping up out of nowhere oh that's so cool that is just so cool but I know a lot of you guys are really eager for us to jump into free play and we're gonna do that pretty soon but the missions have been really fun I've actually really loved the missions there's some of the better ones that I've ever had in a game like this before and I actually really love how much I learn from the missions on how to run a zoo and how to make sure it's properly taken care of so we're gonna go ahead and jump on into the next mission last time we completed the the development aid mission in which we actually went to a village in Africa and we helped them to breed ostriches and there were so many ostriches and then we helped them to progress from just being an ostrich farm on getting up to the point where they could have tourists come and they could try to contribute to protecting their native wildlife just from being able to host a bunch of tourists which was really cool and so today we're gonna jump into a new one called the life signs all right so what's this one got to offer us I'm really looking at the attraction deep sea monster that one's pretty darn exciting but we're gonna continue with this one a hot trail leads you to your father thus leading you to an extremely unusual project so it looks like we are back looking for our dad who has historically wandered away from us so we're gonna go see if we can find out what our dad is doing so let's go ahead and jump on in Hopefully we'll have found him, maybe solve that little mystery, drag him back to our family in Sweden, I think it is. All right, here we go. It was really worthwhile to visit Lake Takanika and Bernidi. Bambutain. <laughs> oh my gosh, I cannot pronounce any of these things, but we're rolling with it. Uh, Babatundi was actually able to find your father who had mysteriously disappeared. Thus, your father contacted you and asked you to come visit him in Egypt. He urgently needs your assistance with his current project there. Your father is already awaiting you when you arrive in Egypt. He explains the reason for his mysterious disappearance. A secret research project! Near a riverbed, he discovered genetic material from a prehistoric well, the Basilosaurus, and he is now planning to collect this material to breed back a real Basilosaurus. You can support him by taking care of several things. Organize financing to cover the running cost of this project. You can increase your income by breeding crocodiles and dromedaries. And you can manage the breeding back process of the Basilosaurus and take care of Hans, your father's rhino. So apparently, our father has a pet rhino that's just kicking around and we are going to be diving in to try to help him out with it well i, I guess this is this a is this the pile of bones is that our dad sir you look nothing like my dad oh my gosh and oh oh goodness sorry about that look at this look at this in the background there's like this huge pyramid in the background is this really our dad oh my goodness <gasps> i guess it is are you dad he is indeed dad actually so he's over here just working away look at this Oh, wow. So there's large genetic finds. There's small genetic finds. There's genetic finds everywhere. That is so cool. Is this his lab? Oh, he's got little statues of dinosaurs. That is so neat. So this is his lab, I guess. Um, let's see. Jump to this building's employee. That would be dad. And we can move it around if we needed to. You could increase the working area, but he's got plenty to work with right here, it looks like. Um, oh, look. There's the Basilosaurus. Okay, so... All right, if I wanted to go ahead and start on this, I think you have to have, like, can I start on it? Or do you need, do I need more jeans? Well, we could just go ahead and start on it and see. Oh, look, oh, I see. So it's going to just, like, automatically start draining the genetic material that he gathers and putting it towards trying to make the Basilosaurus. So we'll work on that. And then Dad, Dad has a rhino. Oh, my goodness, look at this. Are you, like, the pet rhino? Hans! Oh, look, he's got like a little, he's got like his little river and he's got his little foraging food right here. So I guess he's just the pet rhino that wanders around. Or excuse me, she is just the pet rhino that kind of wanders around. Um, do you need anything in particular, darling? Let's see, water and foraging, scraping and wallowing, lowland, hardness of ground, uh, minimum age, 40 years, sexual maturity, 6 years, size of herd, 1 to 20, so okay with just being on your own, I guess. Okay, doing well, so apparently Hans is doing quite well, but we'll need to wallow. Oh, what does wallow do? Do we have something for wallowing and scrape? So we can put these down for scraping. Um, what does wallow entail? Small stones, 
Do I need to make like a muddy spot? I get, can I make like some mud for you? Hi, Hans. I'd love to wallow around in the mud. Okay, so maybe if we make some mud down here. Oh my gosh, and what's all that noise? Oh, there's camels. So that would be the dromedaries, I guess. Uh, who need some attention. And what's going on? The ground is really too dry. Okay, so there's some unhappy plants in there. But we need... Oh, and yeah, look. Mud does allow for wallowing. Interesting. So what if we do this? Oh, what's this? Crocodile 15 has laid an egg. Oh, there's eggs. Oh my gosh, look at all the crocodiles. So there's crocodiles and eggs everywhere. Oh my gosh, look at this. That is so cool. Are these crocodile eggs too? They look really interesting. They look totally different. They look totally different than these crocodile eggs. Look at all these crocodiles. What are you guys going to do? Okay, let's turn around. Let's get a good look at them. Oh, they look so cool. They don't look like the big giant crocodiles, but here's some, here's some crocodilian eggs just hanging out down here and some crocodiles. Okay. There's some over here. Do we need to move them? I guess the eggs will be okay. Uh, what is, what's wrong with you guys, though? Too many of my kind around here. Okay, what do you normally prefer, crocodile? Um, they like their size of herd to be one to eight. Interesting. I guess the eggs count then? If I moved the eggs out, would that change things? That's very interesting. I wonder if eggs count as being part of the size of herd. So, I mean, I guess we could, uh, I guess since we have two piles of eggs, and actually we found out when we were breeding the ostriches that the eggs sell for just as much. Oh, wait a second. Sell value 4,000. Sell value 8,000. Why is that? Well, that's interesting. Well, we're going to go ahead and sell. Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh my gosh. You guys. Oh my gosh! You're kidding me! Look at him go! Oh my gosh! No way! Crocodile peculiarity of nature! What is this? What is this? What are we looking at right here? They're albino crocodiles! Ah, oh, That is so cool! Like a tiny little dash of Indominus Rex going on right here. They're all albino crocodiles! I'd do anything for some raw meat. More fish, please. Too many of my kind around here. Please give me softer ground. Interesting. Interesting. How long would it take for these guys to grow up, though? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and see if selling these eggs um, will actually help out with making them feel like there's less of their kind around here. Oh, my gosh. Too many of my kind around here. All right. Um... Ah, oh, gestation time. They take five years to get to sexual maturity. Oh, but I want to keep them. I want to keep the cool looking ones. But I don't think we'll be able to. Ah, because they'll take so long to grow up. What if we just keep... Um, okay, there's one. There's female and male. Female and male. And then this is a male. So let's go ahead and sell this big male. And then sell this little invisible guy, even though he's super duper interesting because he's invisible. Uh, I'll wait till he can get a little bit of food in his belly. Now it's your problem. Too many of my kind around here. All right. And then we'll go ahead and I want to keep, um, I kind of want to keep a female and male. Hey, hey, buddy. You're like way far away from all of your food and everything. Do you want to come over here? A, pe a peculiarity of nature. That is so interesting. All right. Well, I'm going to sell the invisible one. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And if I can get him down to just being, I think, is it eight? Let's see. Size of herd eight should make him happy. So two, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight of you here. Okay, so there, there's a few that are starting to be less fussy. Please give me softer ground. So now they just are more worried about soft ground. So hardness of ground zero to 30. Oh, I should probably check on dad. I got distracted by the fact we have really awesome albino, albino crocodiles. Let's give them some nice muddy ground that they can kind of wallow in. There you go. In fact, let's just start, you know, mud everywhere. Why not? I think that that's actually better for the crocodiles, in my personal opinion. All right. Oh, they seem happier. There we go. So now I'm going to keep, like, I want to keep some of these albino crocodiles and see if we can raise them to adulthood and get them to breed and continue that peculiarity of nature. What a cool phrase. That is so neat. 
All right, so those guys are happy. Oh, and we should probably check our mission checklist to see what's going on. All right, mission objectives. Keep four crocodiles, keep two dromedaries, keep one rhino, which would be Hans, the male rhino that our dad has, and then keep one basilosaurus and achieve an animal satisfaction level of 100%, which we're actually at. That is so cool. So I guess Hans is happy. You happy, Hans? Yep, doing well. What about you guys? You want to give your, your little something to scratch yourself on? No problemo. Look at that. Look at that. Now you guys have some stuff to, like, scratch on. And what's going on over here with Dad? He's working away. You look nothing like my father. Nothing like my father. He looks more like the, the Walt guy from that Breaking Bad thing. I never watched it, but, um, you know, you saw his face everywhere. All right, let's see. What's going on in the laboratory? Ooh, progress is actually being made. So 31%. On the basilosaurus. I guess we, we can actually pause progress. That is so cool. Oh, look at this. Oh my goodness, 100 kilograms of fish a day. Maybe we need to start getting like the fishing stuff started now. Oh my goodness. So, an ocean environment, hard to soak ground, temperature, swimming depth. Oh, they even have swimming depth for the aquatic animals. That's so interesting. Maximum age, 80 years. Sexual maturity, 8 years. Size of herd, 1 to 10. Offspring is one gestation time is a little over a year okay oh what was that oh that's me <laughs> then let's see this would be um the resource storehouse so how much we have left of different foods okay eucalyptus apparently we've got a lot of eucalyptus and milk of all things that's so interesting and the genetic material that we've got uh, and then how much we use i have, I have not seen this before because I just haven't been paying enough attention, I guess. And there's an animal keeper. Is he pretty happy? All right, looks like all the animals are kind of well taken care of. So we're really just kind of waiting on Dad. Can I get him? Is, is Hans happy? Hans is happy. Can I get Dad, another researcher, to help him out? No. Oh, my gosh. And it's so expensive to hire these researchers. Holy moly. I wonder if I can just get a fish farm set up at least. I want to get a fish farm set up over here. Just so we can estimate, like, the the pricing. No, I want it to operate. There we go. Just so we can be prepared. So we're going to start generating some fish over here in the background because I'm really worried about that. All right, Dad, how's your basil going? Like, your basilosaurus. How's the fish? How's the fish doing? I didn't mean to shrink your research area. Sorry about that. All right. It's taking a little while, but let's go ahead and let's speed it up then. So we're on super duper speed. And we're making progress again. So as fast as he's gathering the genetic material... Uh-oh, I think some of our plants are dying. Can your plants really die? Is that a thing that can, like, happen? Oh my goodness, I think it is a thing that can happen. Okay, the ground here is really too dry. So what do you prefer, date palm? 25 to 60. Why not? Why not make the plants happy while we're here? So 25 to 60 would be, like... Like this stuff? What do you think? Does that make you happier? Oh, it does make them happier. I think it does improve their health too. Interesting. Well, let's go ahead and just make the plants happy. Oh, I think it does improve their health. Look at that. They're kind of perking up. That is so neat. I love seeing those kinds of details on the ecosystems. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and... Oh, I love those crocodiles. Now, the interesting thing is that they really will... Um, take so long it seems to grow up and i'm not used to that i'm used to games where it's just like oh the babies yeah and then in the wild they would grow it would take them years to grow but here they'll grow really quickly and here it's like nope if they take forever to to grow up in the wild then they take forever to grow up here look there's actually literal differences on our plants like this guy is unhappy this japanese pagoda tree what are you even doing here pagoda tree this isn't a place for pagoda trees here you can have some savanna grass um, wait, that's too dry, I think. So you can have some peat, I think. Will that help? I hope that'll help. All right, now we're gonna do some... Oh, I think one of the pagoda trees died. <gasps> it had died. Oh my goodness. Okay, slow things down for a second, Dad. Jeez, we need to, we need to like bring these plants back around. They're all just petering out on us and it's gonna be like a barren wasteland. Oh, that's so cool. Watch them, they're just like coming back from the edge. Oh, I feel so awesome. I feel like a little, a little plant guru over here. Oh, that's so cool. All right, now we're gonna put down a little, some of the little peat for them and some of that for them. Oh, I feel so cool. There we go. All right, what's going on over here, Dad? 
Still working on the project, huh? Actually, tremendous progress has been made, so we might have- <gasps> Congratulations! Crocodile 2 is now pregnant! Wonderful! So we've got all the little babies roaming around still. And it looks like it really will take five in-game years before they would become sexually mature and be able to breed and potentially make, like, little- little, uh, abnormal crocodiles again. What about you guys? Oi? Are you all males? No, there's a female here. They just don't seem very inclined to mate, but let's see. Oh, birth expected in 210 days! <gasps> so they have mated! Hans, how are you doing? I would like to mate now. I'm doing well. Uh, Hans, I don't think we need more baby pet rhinos running around. Just just for the record there, just for the record. All right, so how are the plants doing? I'm gonna leave dad to his little project and come over here. Take care of the plants, make it nice and muddy for them because they don't like the dry land. There you go, there you go. Are you guys happy? Got some happy plans? Who's unhappy over here? Wait, wait, why are you guys unhappy? Please give me a softer ground. What? Okay, wait, okay. That's mud. I can't really, I don't know if I could get it much softer than that. The water is too deep for me. Oh, then let's just go ahead and sell you, little guy. All right. So we seem to be doing good. I feel so proud of myself. Oh, no, they're all dying back here. I mean, we, we really don't have anything else to do but this while we wait for our dad to be able to um, bring the Basilosaurus back to life. So, you know, this is this is what a good kid, a good child does for their parent when they're so deeply involved in their projects. You know, you make sure that, like, the house doesn't burn down and you take care of things like this. All right, good. Everybody's doing okay. Everybody's doing good. Oh, look at that. Environment is 100%. Who's unhappy? Too many of my kind around here. What? Oh, because the eggs got laid. Okay. Don't worry. I'm in on it. I'm on this. So many eggs. But they actually have higher value being sold as eggs rather than a, like, adult or rather than a baby. Which kind of surprises me, but I guess it kind of makes sense. If you know they're viable eggs, why not? All right, there we go. That should make everybody happy again. And it also gives us some much needed funds again. I think breeding the crocodiles is the better way to go because the camels are taking their sweet time about it. They're just like, yeah, I'm a camel. All right, how's it going? What, Dad, what are you doing over here? What are you doing? What are you doing? There's, you have to, your basilosaurus isn't done cooking. What are you doing? I can't move the genetic find. How am I going to get you, like, how do we get him to finish with the, Basilosaurus if he won't go in the water. Because there's plenty of genetic... Oh, I think I know. So that's a huge well. I think I know what we have to do. I think we have to go ahead and raise the terrain. We have to bring the find to dad. All right. There we go. I hate upsetting the natural balance of the ecosystem like this, but he's already on his way, isn't he? Yep, look at that. Ah, see, we're a thinker. We're a thinking group right here. And so now he's like slowly roaming his way over so that we can continue to gather up what we need for the Basilosaurus. Okay, so man, this this stuff takes, whoops, this stuff takes quite a while to do actually. So at least we figured out how to bring that back up. What, why are my plants unhappy again? The ground is too dry. No, the ground doesn't need to be too, what do, does peat help? Is peat better? Or, let's see, soft ground, maybe? Let's try soft ground. Let's see if that makes my plants happy. Oh, that makes my plants happy. They don't know what they want. <laughs> that, at least I have a pet project to take care of while my dad takes care of a pet project. All right, so we'll go ahead. All right, everybody's complaining about the ground. I've got it, I've got it. Coming in with some nice soft ground. Like I said, it's a good thing to do if you're, you're being a good kid, you know, a good daughter, it's like, oh, okay, my parents all caught up in their project. Well, I'm going to find something productive to do and make sure the house doesn't burn down and we all have food. All right, let's do this. And let's come along here. Let's do that. And then I'm going to come up here. I, I'm really glad I thought about lifting the, the ground out because I would have been like, no, we need to bring the Basilosaurus to us. Nope. We actually need our, to bring ourselves to the Basilosaurus. So he's busy gathering that genetic material. And pretty soon we should be able to revive the Basilosaurus, which will be so cool. 
All right, how's the fish farm doing? Fish farm seems to be doing good. Bringing in more fish. Good, good, good. All right, how's this going? All right, let's check on the genetic status. And it's going slowly but surely. So I don't think much is going to change <laughs> while we just sit here and kind of wait for our dad to finish gathering the genetic material. So I'm going to sit here and just monitor the plants and Hans, <laughs> our pet rhino, while we continue to wait for him to finish gathering the material. And I will be back with you guys when it is time to add in the basilosaurus. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye-bye.